there's nothing quite like that excitement of a new day, a new dawn, a new fishing trip. You suddenly forget all the bad fishing trips, all the bad weather, all the strong winds. Once you get on the sea, especially somewhere over here in Southern Ireland, Cork McSherry, small boats, big boats. It's a great place to go shore fishing as well. And we're piling out there. I've been there many times with Mike. We're gonna go offshore. We're gonna be doing some reef fishing aboard Mark Gannon's boats. He runs a couple of boats there, takes out parties of anglers. It is without question some of the finest sea fishing you'll find in Europe. fishermen know the first thing you need is to get out there with some feathers and find some bait. So running the two boats together we go out into Court McSherry Bay trying to find yes the elusive mackerel. Now one pointer you can find is the birds. These are sitting on the water and there's always a sign that there's been something happening early on at dawn. Underneath them will be yes hard fighting mackerel a great fish to eat but look at the number of birds I don't think I've sensed, seen so many guillemots razor bills wherever they are they're telling you that there's fish underneath so the feathers go down and yes up come the mackerel You want it, mate? Yeah. On the old light tackle. Definitely, definitely a pollock, I'd say. Right at the bottom, look at the bend in that rod. Uh, on the feathers. I'd say a pollock. Mate. Yeah. Mike was using a bright pink lure called a tractor shad on my favourite white rod there. I mean, I was supposed to have it myself, but it seems to have been commandeered by him quite a bit now when he goes light tackle fishing. It's not a vastly expensive one, it's just a really nice rod to use. And as you can see, those attractor shad lures are really, really good for Pollock. So we stayed around the headlands looking for the birds, following the birds, wherever the birds were sitting on the water, always, always worth a drop with some feathers because you don't know what's underneath. Those birds are not sitting there for nothing. They're not out there to have a picnic or a day out on the water or a little bit of sunbathing. They're there for fish. There's a sign that if they're mackerel underneath, who knows what else is eating those mackerel. And here, some of the first fish to come up on the bottom fishing baits congas and ling, pollock, cod. And this is what you go to Ireland for, some great reef fishing. Well, that's not the best. But that might be the man. No, I don't think it's escape. Did it move it, did it? No, it's not escape. Good fish. Very many. No, it's the ones we bought this morning. Yeah, I'd say it's not escape. Big panga. Years ago they used to kill a lot of conger, now most anglers tend to put them back. They're not the world's greatest eating fish, they're certainly one of the world's greatest fighting fish. Why not put them back, fight another day to give you some sport? 
and on light to medium tackle they really really do put a bend in the rod. Having fished one part of a reef Mark was soon moving the boat off to find yet another reef. There's no shortage of reefs in Ireland and if you hit them one after the other obviously depending on tidal conditions you can soon load up on fish pollock, cod, ling, conger, gurnard, wrasse it's all there. What do you think, Mike? You're on. I don't know what it is. But the guys are saying cod. Everybody's I think it is a cod, actually. It's a cod, man. It's a... What do you think? Yeah, a cod. Yeah, it's a cod. Oh, nice cod. Nice hey. cod, man. A four or five pounds. Ah, oh, well, there we go. A fine cod caught on the old pink. Four inch attractor shad for fish action, quality little lure. Let's get this lure straight back down there. Awesome fish. Well, I can't let Mike get away with that lure. He's got that fish action. We've got a sidewinder as well, and I'm on here with a sidewinder lure. What it is, I do not know. It does not feel like a pollock. I've got quite a few pollock now. If it's a cod, is it bigger than his? I've got a feeling it might be a cod. We've had an absolutely cracking day. It's a fabulous evening with the sun going down here. We know there's bad weather on the way. So Mark the skipper's just decided to tough it out, hang it out a little bit longer. What a good job he did on this reef. I think almost everybody's hung a few fish on this one. Mind you, this one's not in the boat yet. There's nothing worse than losing a fish that you don't see. Is it a cod? Is it a pot? Is it a lip? I'm kind of hoping it's a cod. Folks, just look how far that lure is down this cod's mouth. It's like a 16 inch sideways and I can't even see it. Wow, how are you going to get it out? I'm not bothered. It's this one, it's probably on the way to the frying pan. Beautiful. Well, you've seen a few ling and conger caught. Just going to show you the setup that we use here at Totally Awesome. So, rod I've got is a 20 to 30 pound class rod. I've got a lever drag reel here, multiplier, and 40 pound line, main line. Going down to the terminal rig, the terminal gear, we've got one of Dad's homemade coat hanger booms, just there, sliding boom, which the lead sits off just off the bottom there. Then got a bead, just to stop it going over that knot, and then a big barrel swivel there, again, to stop that boom going down to the terminal bit which is here and from the swivel we've got about five to six feet of 80 pound mono and that comes down to an 8-0 hook with a nice barb on it there and then dad's just going to show you how to put the bait on well the ling is definitely a predatory fish as is the conger they both feed on the bottom the conger skulks along the bottom but the ling feeds a little bit higher up in the water now the bait I use, in fact everybody should be using it if you can find them, if you can catch them, is the mackerel. I've got a whole mackerel here. I'm going to make just a regular flapper of it. It's the way I do it. Insert in the back there a sharp knife. Keep your fingers behind the blade when you cut and run that just along the edge of the backbone. Turn it over. Do the same that way. Just stroke it along the back, back, backbone there. You, you'll feel it just bump, bring it out by the tail. And then, you can see there is the backbone which keeps the bait rigid. I just gently saw it there and you'll, you might hear it click. There, it's popped. One draw of the blade, it's out. I don't want to go right through the fish, otherwise I'd cut that other fillet off. That goes in the chum bucket for anything else we want to use as ground bait. This is such a dead easy rig. And it's a big fish rig. Trust me. There's the throat latch. You see the fish's mouth there? There's the throat latch. I'm going to put this 8 
O'Shaughnessy hook through out the top. As you can see, I'm going to put it right through. Pop, it goes through like that. Now just measure roughly about here. If you put it too far down, it's going to bend that flip, fill it back. And in a strong tide, it will make it spin. Right, I put the hook right the way through, but make sure you put a little split, a little slot there. Just cut a little bit in the back there, because then when you bend this hook shank down, look, can you see, I'm gonna bend that down and what it does to the point of the hook there. If you just see that, just watch. As I push down, it buries into the bait, but it also brings that nice and parallel, and I just pull this tight. It makes a little sort of twisted hitch across here, and as you pull that keeps that shut, you won't get any spinning in the tide. That is a bait par excellence. You didn't know I spoke French, did you? For Conga and Ling. After a great day's fishing, Mark wanted to take us further down the coast to the west, on the other side of Corma Sherry Bay is the Seven Heads Peninsulas. A great place to fish and just look at that stunning scenery. Sean, stand by the anchor there, so Sean. Uh, we're just going to uh, anchor up tight then, I'll grab and drift jet back of this reef. We hope we get some nice uh, conger and ling. And, and then, there's, uh, there's mud all around it, you say? There's mud all around, so we've got a good chance of escape as well, you know? Good chance of escape as well. What sort of species are you likely to pick up, Mark, or you, have you had yeah, over the years? Yeah, we've had specimen, specimen cod here, we've had conger up to, up to 38 pounds, we've had blue shark, had two sharks last week, two, two metres 20 was the biggest, we've had skate here, we've had um, bull hus, nice lean, doggies, cocoa rass, good pollock, a good, good pollock you know, ground. It's, it's, a very it's a very nice mixed, mixed place to fish, you know, a, a reef for mixed fish. And not too far offshore for people. No, this is it's like, not, no, like three or four, four miles off the head. We're, we're getting sharks here, we're only three miles just after Murray yeah. Beach. Three miles after land, you know, we're getting yeah. sharks. So it's yeah. good. Big down high, big so one. we just, uh, we normally just put two lines out the stern, bag out the stern, two shark lines, put them about uh, 20 metres behind the boat, 30 metres behind the boat, and uh, fish away on the bottom. I'd say it's one of the few places where you can catch conger ling on a reef and shark as well. So it's it's super, you know, super place to fish. At depth, what depth is it here? The, the top of the peak is about 46 meters, goes down to about 65, 65 meters in the mud. Well, we've got the anchor down with Mark, and uh, all baits on the bottom. We've got one shark lying out. We got people pollock fishing with lures, jigs, bits of bait. And there's a bait on the bottom, and our first bite of the day is right here on this rod. Fish on Graham. He's fighting at it, but I don't know he's. Okay. He's a bit tentative. It's a bit like yesterday, you know those, those bites. Yes, here we go. Oh, yeah. that was good. Hit it. That's a fish. Ah, it's getting much bigger than first. Doesn't feel very big. I hope I'm not. Gets the yeah, skunk out of the bait. Line. It's a mackerel flapper bait. No kicks at all. Don't think it's a very big fish. Hopefully it's not my other line, I'm just winding up and look really stupid. But it could be. No, it's a fish. There's a fish here somewhere, but he's not that big. I feel a small ling. That's what I feel. I've got that twang about it, a conger when you get a conger. Why well, I like conger fishing myself is you can wind right down and they just hold the rod over. Twisting and thumping, bang, bang, bang. Whereas a ling, once you get them moving, maybe, maybe totally wrong of course, a ling once it's moving, Starts to blow up as it comes up quickly. Oh, and gee, I called that one right. There you go, it's a nice lee. You can see the size of the bait he's taken there, and you can see also those pin sharp teeth. It's a great eating fish. Generally, they can come just a little bit off the bottom, they come off the seabed, which is a colder. He is. Posted that to the back of beyond. Well, we've just uh, 
heard a couple of ticks on the line, I had a look at the float and I, I can actually see something flashing down there, but I thought it was a sunfish and the, the thing coming up from a sunfish, but actually we've seen it come up again on the float and it looks like a blue shark. We're just waiting for it to take the bait now. So it's on, it's on really light drag and we're just waiting for that Jaws moment of it ticking. Them. Here we go. He's got it. Has he picked up? He's picked it up. <laughs> Float's gone. Du -du 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 -du. Love it. He needs, to, he needs to eat pressure. that. Yeah, he needs to eat that. Do I need to bring any rabs up? I think, no, I think you're okay for He's going to be really finicky if he's like any of the other, these other ones. I think he might have dropped it. Float's still gone though. He's coming towards us. Tighten up to him. Mike, or Graham, fish on this one. Okay, I scared the shark. We'll film this wind, one. Just wind him until he goes tight and then he's fallen. No, he's dropped it. He, I don't think he has. Keep it. winding. No, he's floats under. Floats there. Well, he's, he's wind again. He's there. No, he's there. He's shot it. Isn't he? No bumps? No, he's, he's shot it. I wouldn't have been able to okay. wind it that much. Just hold it there. Free spool. Fish on. Fish on. Okay. Oh, he's right on the float. Look. He's right. He's got it. He's got it. I just found tug it. Have you got it? Yeah, he, I don't know if he's just nibbling at it. Just tug it, just tug yeah, it here, make him, make it seem as though he's swimming away. Yeah, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. Here's your float. Here it goes, here it goes. And right, Charlotte's got a ling in her tongue. Floats on the way, look at the float. <laughs> look at the float. Yeah! <laughs> Drop it. Oh, okay. Drop it. Did he pull tight? Don't worry. No, he didn't want to tie. He hates my head now. Still doesn't move. I'm going. Oh, no, he's going. Nice fish, Sean. Good man. Nice thing. Nice thing. Good stop. Here's the main feature, we hope. He certainly woke him up. Woke everybody up. And this is blue shark fishing, guys. Just in from the land over there. You can zoom in there. There is the seven heads. Here comes the float. One, one quick, one quick, one quick. One quick. Back off the drag, Mike. Lose line. You would have popped him. Mind your arrow, That's mate. Right. Going. Oh. Yeah, you go around the anchor rope. Right? Uh, and watch where the anchor rope is, which way you're going to go over and under. Um, Take your time and don't drop the No, he won't. He's definitely got a better vantage point here. Up no, he's going to go over the anchor rope. He's going to fall arse on him. He doesn't like that he's going towards it. No, just haul him, haul him, haul him. He's right on the anchor rope. He's not doing anything, just keep hauling. Just, just keep it left. Keep the pressure on him. Do you have to try to put the rod on any gank? Oh, no, 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 he's, no, he's right, right on it, eh? Yeah, you're yeah, right. Just keep you're that right. pressure on. It's a stiff run. That's good. He's giving me a bit of a fight down, Mike, isn't he? Yeah, it's good. It's a bit of a workout. He just wants that rope fixed on, doesn't he? You get a tour of the boat here as well, Mark. Sorry? He gets a tour of the boat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got it. I didn't shot. Ah, uh, Jesus. What you got? He's Alex, man. He's Alex. Yeah, yeah. What color? Yeah. Where's the Where's the, the stern, Mike? Get the stern. You get the gun. Well, after that epic battle, we finally got the, the shark in the boat and it's certainly still got lots of energy. We've got the tags here, so we're going to tag it, release it, get it back in the water as quick as possible.
There we go, the tags in. Right. Total length, lads. Total length, yeah. Right. And that's uh, that's 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 Loaded it up on like, something. Yeah. yeah, looks like we're loaded into something now. I'm not quite sure what it is. It's not kicking much. I'm guessing a ling. You think it's a ling? You're going to call it as a I'm ling or a call, conga? I'm going to call it ling. Oh no, I don't think it's a conga. Conga be bashing around, I reckon. You don't want to bunch up with a multiply. Bunch up the line in one place. You want to keep spreading it around. Keep it an even line lay. And it is to conga. Oh yes, yeah, a conga. That one off the list. Perfect hook in there. Well guys, I don't know if you saw that, I certainly did. What an epic fight with that blue shark. Took me all around the boat, nearly got me tangled up with the anchor rope, everything. It was a wicked fight. And the great thing was, we could see it on the surface before it actually took the bait. And that's a real adrenaline rush. Now let's talk, let's talk fishing gear. So, slightly heavier gear than the Ling and Conga gear. We've got a 50 pound class rod, same reel, uh, we've got lever drag, and 50 pound line on there, so nice, tough, strong line. That goes down to a sliding float. You can use water bottles, you can use lots of balloons, lots of things. We use a sliding float with a quick release clip here, so that as that pops, then that float can then slide up and down. Then, we're getting towards the business end. We've got a big barrel swivel there, and we've got, well, Dad has got a strimmer line basically thick strimmer line no stretch really really tough and that's crimped on if you don't have strimmer line about 300 pounds mono would do you fine that's the rubbing leader then we've got crimps either side again and another barrel swivel that goes on to the 600 pound wire trace okay and then the business end is the hook which is crimped on again and you can use an 8 or 10 hook i bet you're wondering how you bait up Here's Dad hitting you with some tips on how to bait for sharks. Well, man, I was pleased to film that scrap that Mike had with that shark. And the best bit about it, I mean, I've done a lot of blue shark fishing, probably too much, was the visual aspect of seeing that fin cut through the water actually coming. I believe it was coming for the, the float I used first, and then we wound and took it away, took it away, and that shallows up the bait, and then bang, he got it, and a rip, it, well, it's a rip roaring take, wasn't it, when he, when he got that initial take? You know, that's when you think, is it a blue, is it a maker, is it a thresher? Okay, baiting up for sharks. A little bit of a variation. This is a grey and pull and variation. Maybe other fishermen do it as well. They probably will after this. I have my roughly sort of 8010 hook here. I have my whole mackerel. Mackerel is generally a good bait for a blue shark. Now, very, very similar to taking a flapper bait that we showed you earlier for the ling, but I'm deboning this one. Now you can buy a deboning tool that cuts through the mouth, you open the mouth, and you break through here with a tube and you debone it and it makes it very limp. I do it another way because this way you get some juice and blood and guts coming out in the water. We all know shark love blood and guts. Here we go. I put the point of my knife in just behind the pectoral fin here, down through the stomach, and I'm gonna carefully, carefully run it along the top of the backbone, turn it over, duplicate it, just here. Run it along the top of the backbone, do not cut through the bone until the last moment. Now then, sort of tricky thing. I'm gonna put the knife in through this cut I've made. I'm just gonna gently saw and pop the backbone. Now I can feel the knife go through, you might not be able to hear it. It's one of those things you get used to. I turn it over, 
I come in the back here. I, I'm not cutting right through both fillets. I just gently saw a pop. I, held, I, I, I can feel it go the vibration through here. That, you will see, I can now take out the slice out the entire backbone. Don't waste it, put it in the chum bucket. Now, look how loose and floppy and limp that is now. Look at it. All the juice and guts come out there, okay? But most important, if you're in a rough sea, the rise and fall on my float gives all that movement to the mackerel. And any passing shark might, might, I'm not saying they do, they probably just smell it. But it might just make that tricky shark think, that's moving, that's alive. Hook goes in through the throat latch. I always go through the bottom of the throat latch because I want those jaws shut. Bring it out, sort of centre at top of the head. Turn it round, get your finger, straighten the trace, rip the whole shebang through his head, eyeballs, ears, brains, whatever. Turn it over. I don't go right down the bottom. I just go in behind the pectoral here. And same as with the ling, bring the point out so you can see like that. And of course, you've been to school already, people. You know this. Insert that blade at the back. Don't forget that little cut there, the most important thing. It pushes down into the cut, the shank of the hook. Pull the wire trace tight. C'est la voila. There it is in Hindustani or whatever. Point of the hook is showing. And that has unbelievably wonderful action for a shark. Bit of guts come out. Who cares? Sharks love guts. One shark bait, ready to go. Well, now that was some awesome action on those pollock. Really good towards the end of the day. We'd had a brilliant day. I'd had the sharks. We'd had a good variety of fish on the boat. Conger, ling, pollock, as you saw. Mackerel earlier on in the day. Some really, really good variety species. But nice to have a bit of action just as the sun was setting. Let's talk gear. So, light tackle, but not too light. So I've got a spinning rod here, a standard spinning rod, that casts 40 to 80 grams. But it can take a good lead because I'm not casting that lead out, I'm dropping it down. So it can take some heavier leads. 4,000 size reel, that's loaded with 15 pound line, mono. That comes down to a French boom here. And off that French boom, obviously the lead is at the bottom of the French boom. This goes up to my rod. And that kicks out our lure, which for, the, for me, the lure of the day, well, the lure of my life at the moment, is the fish action. There's a lure from fish action and this is the attractor shad four inch i think it's got that lovely paddle tail there and pink is an absolute killer color for pollock and cod i got that nice cod on it and i had a good variety of pollock i think i had about seven pollock on the on this lure really really good ultra stretchy it's made from this everlasting formula so it can get fish after fish after fish and it just doesn't damage it doesn't deteriorate obviously after a while it will but compared to other lures it's just got a bit more durability great fun if you can do if you can get out on those wrecks just shallow reefs definitely give it a go but dad was also into the fish he was using slightly different gear but it still worked the same and he was hauling up on those fish too well i made a very very bad mistake today people i left my light spinning rod in the car on the pier here at Cormac sherry not a wise idea as you've seen from the bend in mike's little white rod there however i managed to press into service my, one of my 20 pound rods, regular mould applier, just happened to have this braid on it. Not a great lover of braid, but this is thick braid, which I do get on with okay. And we've had some big sharks and big common skates on this stuff. Don't mind that at all. And at the end of the day, don't forget, although I'm on heavier tackle, I can adjust that lever drag so I don't bust off fish. I don't break lines, I don't tear hooks out. Well, not too many anyway. Same principle as Mike, very, very similar boom. The boom helps when you're dropping down like this fast, you do not want the trace winding around here like this and twisting up on your main line. You will catch nothing. The boom is there to separate your main line from your trace. The same trace as Mike. I've got some 15 pound line, but on the other end, I'm not using one of those. I'm not gonna be seeing one of those pink things. I'm using one of these. It's a sidewinder lure. And these have integral weights in the head there. Now, little tip here, guys, a totally awesome tip. When you drop down to the bottom, don't forget you're over reef, you're over rock hard ground. It's snaggy, you will lose gear eventually. The lead hits the bottom. Generally a soft lure, like Mike was using, I find will be a little bit better because it sinks slower. So your lead hits the bottom, you put the reeling gear and you start winding two or three quick turns to get the lead off where you don't want it snagged 
and then you wind up smoothly to the surface making the lure work. These, well, as the lead hits, this bang, this is down as well. Don't forget it's got the lead as it weight inside the head. So my tip is, as soon as the lead hits, just start turning to get this puppy off the ground because once it's working, it's got that similar paddle tail action, wiggling and swimming all the way to the surface. Did I catch fish? Of course I caught fish. I'm using a sidewinder lure.